MathCAD Prime possesses a lot of capabilities for use in measurement and instrumentation applications. I will use an example of importing motion sensor data to illustrate the basics of importing, managing, and analyzing data in a MathCAD worksheet. As I did in the first half of this webinar, I'll work from a prepared worksheet so I can focus attention on the tools available for accessing and using data. In this example, we will work with a .csv file. The data in the CSV file was captured by a motion sensor measuring the height of an object above the sensor in meters at a time in seconds. Here's a quick look at the data in the Excel spreadsheet. Spreadsheets are great for organizing data into columns, but they are not an ideal document for performing and doing the calculations that I want to make. In this case, I want to make an XY plot of the data, look for patterns, use curve fitting tools to model the data, and afterward I want to study the velocity and acceleration of the projectile whose motion is described by the data. I also want to determine the maximum height that the projectile reached. And when I'm finished with these tasks, I want my worksheet to explain the results and how they were derived. My first job is going to be to get the data from the CSV file into the MathCAD worksheet within a data structure. MathCAD Prime has a read CSV function which can read the contents of CSV files and then store it as a matrix. I'm going to use read CSV in an assignment statement and then I can refer to the matrix using a very variable name anywhere in my document after that definition. I can also refer to the contents of that matrix by column, by row, by submatrix, or by individual element. In this case, I'm primarily going to be interested in using columns as data vectors. So I'm going to begin with a variable definition. I'm going to use the generic name data, and I'm going to assign that the value of a function. And that function is going to be a file access function. When I left click on file access, I can scroll down until I find read CSV and what read CSV does is it returns a matrix from a comma separated value file. So I'll left click on that and that gets inserted into my definition. Now I need to insert a file name. I'm going to go and left click on input output and there's an icon for data file name. When I left click on the data file name it's going to open up a file browser and I can go over and find my data file in this case projectile data.csv. Left click on that and then click open. The entire path is now inserted into the parentheses so that's going to be passed to function read CSV as a parameter. So now I have the data in my worksheet and when I click out of this region MathCAD is going to read the data from the file. If I want to see the results I can use inline evaluation. So I can either hit the equal sign or go to the operators and choose numerical evaluation and then MathCAD is going to grab all that data and show me what it looks like. So we can see when I'm in this region to the left are the row numbers and then I have two columns of data. The first column are the seconds and then the second column are the heights in meters. My worksheet currently contains a single matrix with two columns of data, time data in seconds and height data in meters. Since it was read in from the CSV file, the data is currently unitless and I'd like to add units to each measurement. An easy way to do this is to use MathCAD's matrix column operator to define new variables, one for each column in the data table. The first column in matrix data contains the time values. In order to add the unit seconds to each measurement, I'll define a variable called time, and I'm going to assign it the value of the first column in matrix data. Now that I have my definition statement begun, I'm going to go up to the matrices tables ribbon, and I'm going to look under vector matrix operators. When I left click, I can scroll down and find the matrix column operator. The description says that this function returns a column from a matrix. When I insert that, there are two placeholders. The lower one is for the name of the matrix, and the upper one is for the column that I wish to acquire. In this case, the name of that matrix is data, and we want to acquire the first column, which is column 0. And we want to add a unit to these values, so now I can multiply by s, the unit for seconds, and that will give me a vector of values that if I evaluate it, will all have the unit seconds. So now we've added those on. I'll delete that. The second column in uh, data is height. So I'm going to define a variable called height. This time I can start with data, go up to operators, and add the matrix column. And we want to put into height column 1, and we want to multiply that by the unit in which the data was originally collected, which is meters. So now I have both my time data and my height data in data vectors, and I've added units. And I can do things in my worksheet, like evaluate time at matrix index 
10 and find that's one tenth of a second, I can evaluate height at matrix index 10 and that's 0 0.432 meters. I could also use these as an expressions and subtract one height from another and so on if I wanted to calculate a slope at a point. So now I've got my data in a useful form because I have both vectors and the original matrix and I can work with my data. For my current project what I want to do is insert a plot so I can look for a pattern in the data and I can very quickly plot this data now that it's in these vectors by clicking on the plots tab and left clicking on insert plot and I want to insert an XY plot. By default the plot region has an x-axis placeholder beneath the plot and a y-axis placeholder to the right. I wish to put time as my independent variable on the x-axis and I wish to put height as my dependent variable on the y-axis. So I can add time and height and right away I get a nice picture of the data. These are my two vectors and if I want I can convert my plot from a line plot to a scatter plot using the styles on the plots ribbon. First I need to add a symbol so I'll add a, a dot and then I can change the line style to none and then I can see the pattern of data. My plot is going over the line a little bit. I guess I'll just delete a row there and now I can see the entire plot. So now that I've successfully introduced the data into my worksheet and then plotted it, I can see that the shape of the data appears to be parabolic. And I can use this observation to better understand the data that was measured by the motion detector as it collected the initial data set. MathCat has a large number of built-in functions for working with data. When I look at the functions tab, there are lists of functions under statistics, under data analysis, and under curve fitting and smoothing. In this case, I want to calculate the equation for a best fit line for the data, so I will focus on the curve fitting and smoothing functions. There's a long list of options that we can scroll through. I'm going to hover over linfit because this is a suitable function in this case. Linfit takes as parameters two data vectors, vector x and vector y, which I have in my worksheet as time and height, and a third parameter. And the third parameter is a vector of functions that can be used to approximate the shape of a plot relating x and y the other two vectors. I'm going to scroll down in my worksheet and I want to create this matrix vector now that's going to be the model that I want for my curve. I often use a variable name like terms to establish this data vector and in this case I need to give it an argument so this is actually going to be defined as a function terms of x because we're going to use x which doesn't yet exist in our worksheet in the vector. On the right side of my definition I'm going to insert a matrix. I know that the standard form for a quadratic has three terms so I'm going to go up to insert matrix and I'm going to scroll down into the array for sizing my matrix, select a 3 by 1 and insert that into my worksheet. And now I need to add three terms. I need to add an x squared term, an x to the first term, and an x to the zero term or a constant term. So I'll insert one there under terms. Now I can use terms as the third argument to function linfit and MathCAD will calculate a best fit line or a curve that fits the data um, that I have in my two vectors time and height. After using linfit to calculate the best fit line for the data in this problem, I'm going to want to refer to the coefficients x of x squared x and 1 using a variable name. So I'm going to actually call linfit in a variable definition. I'm going to type c colon, c standing for coefficients, to begin the definition. And then I'm going to go to the right side of the definition statement and go up to functions. And from curve fitting functions, I'm going to find linfit and insert that. Now I'm going to type time as my x axis vector and height as my y axis vector and then my third vector in this case is going to be terms. So now I have a variable assigned that's going to call linfit and pass it these parameters and I can evaluate that and MathCAD will return the coefficients of x squared x and 1. Once I have these in my worksheet I can actually evaluate individual terms using the matrix index operator. So I'll click on matrices matrix index sub 0 evaluate that and that returns the first element, element 0, in uh, matrix C. Now I want to go ahead and I want to make a plot of this data. I want to define a function for h in terms of t. I'm going to use a range variable. So I'm going to define a range variable and I'm going to go to the math ribbon and I'm going to go to operators and go down to vector and matrix and insert a step range. And t is going to have the step range from 0 seconds the start of the sensor data collection. I'll go by tenths here and then to one second as a start for t. And then we're going to define h in terms of t. So I'm going to type h of t colon. Now t is the local parameter. So I'm going to refer to that in my polynomial. And I'm going to use the hotkey left bracket to get the matrix indices. c sub 0 is going to be multiplied by t to the second power. Then c sub 1, matrix index 1, 
is going to be multiplied by t, and my last term is going to be c sub 2. So now I have a function, and I have a range variable, and I can go in and I can plot this function. I'm going to insert a plot, and I'm going to make it an xy plot, and I've defined t and h of t, lowercase h, and that produces my plot, and you can see it's a, once again a line plot, and I used a fairly large grain size for t, so I can go in and adjust that to hundredths of a second, and I'll get a more of the shape of the curve. And now I can use this actually to validate my data by adding a trace. So I'm going to go to the y-axis region, and I'm going to add a trace to that, and that is going to be my height data. And then I'm going to go to the x-axis region, and I'm going to add a trace, and that's going to be my time data. And when those appear on the plot, we can see see, and maybe I'll change that color to red so it's a little bit more visible. I'm on plots, and I'm going to change the trace color to red, and we can see that there's a pretty good fit there between h of t and the data that was collected by, in this case, uh, motion sensor. As I look at the plot of my motion sensor data and the best fit line calculated using LinFit, I can see that I have a function h of t that's a good fit for the data, and the function can now be used to further analyze the phenomenon under study, the motion of the projectile. Thus far, I know the ball was traveling for about 0.8 seconds, that's where my initial data ends, and that a plot of its height over time is in the shape of a parabola. But with h of t defined, I can now generate further op observations using MathCAD's operators. So I'm going to scroll down because I want to look at velocity and acceleration functions. Since I know that h of t describes position as a function of time, I'm interested in the derivative h prime of t, which will help me to calculate the velocity of the projectile as a function of time. I can define this function by typing h prime of t, h prime of t, and now I want to assign that the derivative of h of t. So I'm going to go to the math ribbon and go to operators, and when I left click on operators, I can see the calculus operators, and I want to insert the derivative. And I want to take the derivative, in this case, with respect to t, my range variable, of h of t. And now I've defined h prime of t as my velocity function, the derivative of h of t. Similarly, I can calculate the derivative of h prime of t, which is going to tell me the acceleration or the instantaneous acceleration of the projectile. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to evaluate or define h prime of t, and that is going to be, again, a derivative. I could insert as control shift t or just choose from the palette with respect to t of h prime of t, and now I can evaluate, say, h prime of 0.5 seconds, and I can evaluate h double prime of 0.5 seconds. And I get both of those results very easily. Okay, it's taking the value of the function h of t, taking the derivative and then reporting that result for me. I can also make a plot of these functions and the um, of h of t and its two derivatives. I'm going to remove some space to pull up my label for the plot of height, velocity, and acceleration versus time. I'm going to insert a plot, and when I do that, I'm going to stick in the x-axis region beneath the plot t, the range variable that I created. And here, I can define h of t, add a trace, h prime of t, add a trace, and h double prime of t. And when I click outside, I can see all three plots. There in blue is the original function. Here we can see my velocity function decreasing over time and really crossing the x-axis looks like at the maximum point. And then here's the acceleration function, which is a constant. So now I'm looking at my plot and it's in blue, we have a function modeling the data I got from the motion sensor, and that's the height of the projectile over time, and in black is the velocity over time, and in red is the acceleration over time. And I want to know at this point, what's the maximum height that the projectile reached, and also what was the length of time that it was in the air. And I can see that the maximum height occurs when h prime of t, the velocity function, is equal to zero, and that the length of time is going to be determined by finding the second point at which h of t equals zero. So I'm going to scroll down on my worksheet to the section that I set aside for using a solve block to find the maximum height. And I'm going to left click on solve block on the math ribbon to insert a solve block. And I can see that it's going to overlap on the page. Um, so I'm going to go above the label and I'm going to right click and I'm going to insert a page break. So now I have a clean region to work with. When I look at my plot, I can see what my guess value should be. So I'll scroll back up to the plot quickly and see that right at about 0.5 seconds, it looks like that's where the maximum occurs. So I'm going to guess that the t for the maximum is 0.5 seconds. And that, I'm using a definition statement. And now I need a constraint. And the constraint is going to be when the velocity function h prime of t is the same as 0 
or is equal to zero. So I'm going to go to operators and find the equal to operator, the Boolean equal sign, and say h prime of t equals zero is going to be my constraint. And my solver, if I go to the functions ribbon and I go to solving, I want to use the find solver. And so I'll insert find, and I want to find t, and that's all I want to find, so I can delete the remaining parameters and evaluate that, and I get my result. Um, in this case, what I've done, because I use t, is it's giving me all of the results. And what I really want to know is when h prime of t max equals 0. So I need to adjust that, and I'm going to go in there. And this is a really common mistake. So I'm going to add a subscript to that result, and I'm going to add a subscript down here and then I get my result. And you can see the difference between using t, which I had defined in my worksheet as a range variable, and t max, which is my guess value. So we have to be careful about that. So now I've used the solve block to find the maximum height of the projectile, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to remove space, and I want to go, and I want to find the length of time that it was in the air. So I'll be careful this time about my guesses um, and all of that. So I'm going to again insert a solve block and this time I'll call my guess t land and if I remember correctly that was at about 0 0.9 seconds on the plot and my constraint this time is going to be h of t land is the same as 0 and I can use the same solver. Find t sub land and the result comes up 0.983 seconds, which sounds pretty good, and I can scroll back up and just check on my plot, and yeah, that looks it looks pretty close to 1, so 0.983 seems about right. So now I've found both the maximum height of the projectile, which is occurring at 0.49 seconds, and so I can calculate h of t max, or h of 0.49 seconds, and that's 1.18 meters, and I know that it's going to return to the ground after 0.983 seconds.